Welcome back to the show, everyone. Our poor next guest, Fiona, just warned him. Uh, sometimes ask stupid sports questions. It Perfect. could happen. Uh, could happen. We are joined by Vancouver Canuck, Ryan Kessler. <laughs> there we go. How are you, Ryan? Good. How are you guys? Good to Good. see you, man. Uh, you look really fresh, considering uh, you guys just played last night. You just got fly out last night or or this morning? Yeah, we got in last night. We flew out after the game and, and got in a decent hour. Uh, do you get used to this? I mean, I, I can't imagine the first year that you're in the NHL or, or playing professional hockey, for that matter. I mean, you started out in Manitoba, but... The schedule must take a lot for your body to kind of get used to. Yeah, it's it's even harder in Manitoba because we you don't fly yeah. the way we do. We bus right. everywhere in Manitoba, so it's tough, even tougher on your body there. So, it, it does take some bit of an adjustment. It's really hard on your body. Every hockey player knows you're you're yeah. in the best shape at the beginning of the season, and then your body and body sort of just withers down. Yeah. You go. Do well, you we, have <laughs> tricks to take care of yourself when you guys are working on a really busy schedule? Yeah, obviously rest is very important, but but you you gotta you gotta stay in the gym and you gotta you gotta keep working on your strength because like yeah. like I said, your body just withers away. Well, we had a conversation with Mike Gillis. I think it was it was last year, and he was talking about uh, what the team's done with the training and, and all that stuff to try and work individually with the players. And it, it sounds to me anyway like it's a pretty innovative program that they have. So yeah, you guys. yeah, it's it's uh, it's awesome what they're doing. They're. Uh, they're they're above the curve with all that stuff. We got a sleep doctor. We have a goth sleep, sleep doctor. What yeah, does we, he do? We what were sleep. We well, we just got. Does it done. come in a little glass by any chance? Is <laughs> what is this? Not doctor whiskey. Doctor yeah, that's uh, right. We were watching. It basically just measures how good you sleep because obviously a lot of athletes have that sleep apnea and and yeah. uh, you know it's hard to get to sleep after games. Some guys don't get to bed till three o'clock in the morning because yeah, you're all jacked you're just up. jacked up from the game and and things like that. So basically teaches us how to how to relax and and uh and I guess Focus to get used breathing. to jet lag when you guys are doing games in different time schedules. Or not. Yeah, uh, I think that's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's I, I mean, I can kind of understand the logic of the league a little bit more now uh, that they've divided east and west and, and you sort of do a couple of big trips a year. Because I remember, you know, when I'm a kid and, and you're watching the Canucks and they go on these eastern road trips and, you know, they do it three, four times a year and it must have just been chaos for those Yeah, guys. yeah, it, it's... It's definitely chaos when you got to go out east and, and you're on the on the road for two weeks at a time. I remember last year when the Olympics were here, we were on the road for 19 days, and then we had the Olympics, then we went back on the road for like 17. Yeah. Uh, th that road trip was was uh, a killer. So, do you, are you happy to talk about the Olympics? Was that a, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I know yeah. it didn't end the way that you wanted, obviously, yeah. but uh, what an experience. I mean, that tournament, and, and for you, even, you know, you're on... The opposition team. Uh, it must have been a trip playing in, in your home uh, during the Olympics or your adopted home uh, during the Olympics. Yeah, it was it was obviously a very special moment. A lot of my family actually got to come out and and experience it because they could they could afford it. They all stayed at my place and and uh, it was just a really special experience. I think I had 30 people out here and. Crazy. Wow. And, uh, Did you stay in the village and and your family took yeah, over your house? And... Yeah, my wife had to deal with <laughs> 17 people. Lucky Andrea. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and your wife is here. You guys have another baby on the way. That's a congratulations. Yeah, thank so you. you guys all ready for it? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Fire. 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 Now we have to talk about Saturday night. A very special night uh, for the Vancouver Canucks, of course. Naslin's jersey. You retired. What was that like for you guys uh, to have Naslin there and everything that went on? That was awesome. Obviously, a lot of guys haven't seen him for for a couple of years, and and he was a big part part of this team. And a lot of the guys played with him, and and to see his jersey retired, you know, he, no one in that locker room can say a bad thing about him. He's yeah. he's a great human being. He did a lot for the city, a lot a lot for charity, and. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where where it's it's well deserved. Yeah, you just feel good for the guy. Uh, and and what was the overlap for you guys? Was it a season, two seasons? What was you and Nazi? Uh, sort of back and forth. Four seasons, I want to oh, say. Oh, was it really or that three, long? Yeah. So how much do you learn from a from a guy like that? I mean, just watching the way that he sort of you know, because he had a very different style of leadership mm -hmm. from a lot of different guys too. He's a little quieter, so. Yeah, he was a little quieter, but the funny thing is, is when he when he spoke up, guys listened and and. You know, he was he was one of the most passionate guys on the team. He yeah. hated to lose, and and uh, he he held himself to a high expectation, and uh, he was really hard on himself when when he didn't perform. So, you know, you you learn a lot from a guy like that that cares that much and and wants to succeed. And you know, that's probably the biggest thing I learned from him is is just you know, 
how to, how to play with passion and, and yeah. uh, you are know, you a quiet guy game... when it comes to being on the ice? Uh, now I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was a good question. <laughs> uh, last year, I I, uh, I probably couldn't say that, but this year, I, I don't. Uh, I don't chirp as you, as as I say that I didn't much say anything. Anymore. I just asked you a quiet guy. <laughs> well, it was funny when you and Burr would be on a line together, and you'd see you guys out there, and, and both of you would be chirping <laughs> away all the time. I mean, that is kind of, I mean, that's kind of, that's almost a game within a game, but I, I mean, to me, that seems like part of the fun, too, you know? Like, you, you get to express yourself in a very different way and yeah. have some fun. And yeah, we had some uh, pretty good one-liners when we played together, and, <laughs> and we kind of fed off each other, and, and it was uh, it was definitely fun, but... I think uh, I think we grew out of that part of the game. And, yeah. and, uh, what is it like being it in the, the penalty yeah. box? Is it like standing in the corner? What's the old slap shot? I, I feel it's a very isolated feel feeling. Yeah, <laughs> especially when you when you take a penalty in the last minute of the game. And, and I didn't uh, see that either. <laughs> well, you're making a lot of sensitive stuff. Now we stuff also have form. to talk about uh, why you're here today. You're wearing a great sweatshirt, and you actually have your own clothing line. Mm -hmm. Is this something that was in the works for a while? Uh, they came to me in the summer, and and they. Uh, basically said what do you think about a clothing line and I uh, didn't wasn't sure and then they showed me the logo and and uh, yeah. the logo was unbelievable it's pretty it's, cool it's, yeah uh, it's really cool uh, they got the R the K and the 17 all now when you the say logo. they came to you uh, this company has some great first people star, behind yeah. it yeah. maybe you can tell us who else is involved first star um, John Calflet um, they got a designer named Lovelina um, the owner of the company is Doug and uh, you know, they're just all great people. I mean, I'm forgetting a lot of names, but I, I mean, saw there's Russ so many Cortnell's people. I saw name in there. I think Ferraro is involved. That, yeah, or... so many people are involved, and and uh, it's it's a smaller company, but um, you know, they're they're first class. All was the this way. something you always thought that you would do, or is it just you know that these people <laughs> came to you man growing up. and the right people? Well, you know, there are a lot of athletes that have hugely successful clothing lines. Was yeah. it something that you had planned? No. Just no. happened by accident. Yeah, it just happened by accident. You know, um, I, like I said, they came to me and, and I talked it over with Andrew and um, as soon as I saw the logo, I, I fell in love with it. And, and I, the everybody colors I too talked are great. To, yeah, the colors, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it does matter. I mean, right? Because, I mean, especially this time of year, a lot of kids are going to be getting some of the stuff and adults, yeah. for that matter, getting the stuff for Christmas. So you want to make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, it's sort of meeting your standards as well for what you want to represent and, and who you want to be in the community as well. Yeah, obviously um, you, you don't want to throw a clothing line out there that's not first class. This, the any, Everything from the logo to the design to even the fabric, it's so technically uh, yeah. um, advanced that... Great uh, for athletes, but great for people just kicking exactly. around too. Well, There's Mike really wanted to me. see your underwear picture. Well, then <laughs> when I'm wearing these, I expect to look similar to Do the abs right? come with the underwear or is that... That's not airbrushed, by the way. No, no. I, I never threw out that <laughs> accusation. Yeah, you did. I, Look at your blushing. That's not what I said. Did the guys needle you about the underwear ad? They must. Uh, yes, yes. Um, they said the airbrush comment, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't an original comment. You know, like, uh, it's got to be, I, I mean, it's kind of funny. It's got to be humbling when you, you know, stuff like that. You kind of do it, and, and away you go. Yeah, it is. Um, that, that photo was never supposed to see uh, the light of day. You're but. kidding. <laughs> really? I love uh, it. They kind of conned me into that one, and, and uh, <laughs> next thing I know, it's on the front page of the paper. So. <laughs> well, it. people seem to love it, so oh, yeah. I think you're doing all right. And when's your next game? Um, Columbus, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday night. I got your you. schedule right here. Yeah, so thank I'm you. Ready for you. That would have took me a couple minutes. <laughs> By the way, you're supposed to be asleep right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so on. much for coming right, today. Thanks, if sir. you want to purchase your own RK17 hockey apparel, you can go to the website. There's a ton of great stuff uh, from First Star as well. Great, as we said, for athletes or if you're just kicking around. Good stuff for the holidays. Thanks again, Ryan. Yeah, uh, thank thank you. you, Ryan. And if you want to see uh, what a real man looks like in the underwear, I'll be posting <laughs> on my Facebook, me and them later on, so you can look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> and the website will get shut down.